start fighting again. Okay. In the middle of a bullfight. Oh man. It's literally <laughs> right in front of us. <laughs> All right. Well, hello. We are Luisa and Toby, and we are cycling around the world with our guitar. Right there. <laughs> and uh, we are at over, or actually almost, I don't know, 4,000 meters now in the Cordillera Blanca, uh, one of the most famous mountain ranges in all of Peru, but actually the highest mountain in Peru, like right next to us. <laughs> and um, tomorrow we're going to cycle up uh, lots of switchbacks to the highest tunnel in the whole world. So, so many crazy figures. Yeah. And um, yeah, we are going to take you on an epic adventure through Peru. Queremos ciclar para Cajamarca, pero um, no queremos si um, llegamos a Cajamarca mañana. This is just so great. We're <laughs> camping like uh, in the mountains um, and here are some houses around and uh, already when we were cooking there came some people and just talked to us, watched us cooking and now we're sitting in the tent and then uh, we heard uh, like Buenas tardes and uh, we opened up the tent and I think at first there were maybe three people and then in the end there were maybe ten people the whole standing village around. Kind it was of here. just yeah. They said just the uh, la comunidad. Uh, so just all the people from this village wanted to see us uh, and they know I don't what know, we're doing. Took took some photos, filmed us and yeah. <laughs> I tried to talk to them in Spanish. I'm still learning. And the Spanish in Peru is much different, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so funny when you think now you're gonna get problems with people and they because we're just camping on a field so. yeah and then in the end they just they're just so curious and <laughs> one guy even offered us to sleep in his house and <laughs> I thought that was it's so really nice funny. Yeah. <laughs> Today we left the highway to cycle the last three days to Cajamarca on a smaller road and before we reach Cajamarca tomorrow we have to conquer 4,000 meters today. We slept at around 3,300 meters and uh, yeah we're cycling through a landscape with lots of farmhouses and it's just incredible how friendly the people are even or especially I don't know if they don't have that much and how much they're willing to give you it's just incredible Peru is a vast country with an area of over 1.2 million square kilometers it is the 19th largest in the world and third largest in South America and with an estimated 34 million people, the fourth most populous on the continent. What makes Peru truly unique is its incredible cultural and geographical diversity. Over a quarter of the population in Peru identify as indigenous, mainly Quechua, while more than half considers themselves mezizo, mixed ethnicity. 
There are over 50 indigenous peoples still living in Peru, with the majority in the Andean highlands. From the Pacific coastal region in the west to the Amazon basin rainforest in the east and the Andes in the middle, Peru is considered a mega diverse country, boasting vastly different biomes and habitats. So we arrived in Cajamarca, or actually we're a few kilometers um, away from Cajamarca in Baños de Inca, where we have a host for a few nights. So we can just relax um, before the next trail is starting, which is gonna take a lot of strength from us. <laughs> landscape is unbelievable just over the last kilometer we've had to stop like I don't know seven times just to take photos and film a bit because it's just been so unreal and now this landscape with uh, all these lagoons is starting which is gonna be amazing and you it's the first one right here now Look at that, and our brakes are just gone. <laughs> wow. So we're at the top of this first little pass now at like just above 4,000 meters and there's actually snow. It was three degrees before, now it's a bit warmer again. Um, but yeah, there's actually still a tiny bit of snow. <sighs> Crazy. And yeah, the views are just amazing. Absolutely amazing. And now it's going to go down a bit and then we're going to go up to, go up to 4,200 and then we're going to go a long way down uh, to I think like 500 meters for like hundreds of kilometers. <laughs> Crazy. almost all day and at some point now it got so cold and miserable I mean the landscapes are just amazing but <laughs> still we were um, yeah just craving for some warmth um, so we decided to now camp here at over 4,000 meters and uh, yeah we're now really early in the tent it's not even four but we really need to get warm yeah. <laughs> and it's really nice now and as you can Maybe here it's still raining and now it's raining harder again, so this is cozy. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> cycled all the way to this road to then just see um, that the road is uh, blocked and I just went there and asked and it is a um, private mining property but uh, the guy said with some authorization we're allowed to cycle through there 
which is really good because otherwise we would have had to do a really big detour. Oh man. Yeah, there's just mining activity everywhere. Like you can yeah. see it over there. There's a huge mountain, like that whole mountain is just essentially one big uh, excavation area and it's just gonna probably disappear in a few years. And it's just crazy, mines everywhere here. And yeah, it's not making it easier to circumnavigate all these mm -hmm. roads and so on. And it is an official road here. So. Yeah. The mineral industry in Peru is huge and is a major source of economic growth and national development. In 2019, Peru was the world's second largest producer of copper, silver and zinc and the eighth largest producer of gold. For years, conflicts over land use between mining corporations and communities have been ongoing, with the lack of financial compensation being a core topic. In the process of mining, land and water resources are often compromised, bearing serious consequences for the local communities. By law, the Peruvian government must return some of the loyalties paid by the mining corporations to the local communities as compensation. However, due to political corruption, this is not always the case. Wow, what a crazy road we are cycling down now with countless switchbacks going down a thousand meters into this canyon and up again the other side up a thousand meters again and um, it's just it's actually under construction right now they're just in the middle of paving it um, and this actually marks the end of the first big part of um, the bikepacking.com trail from Cajamarca to Caraz which we have been cycling now the last days the first big part was now that um, high altitude lagoon scattered plain at over 4,000 meters and the second part now is actually um, going along the river that's in this canyon um, and we actually have to do two really big river crossings or we'll cross the river twice and the river is apparently meant to be pretty big um, so hopefully we don't actually have to take those switchbacks up the other side the only thing is if we we haven't seen the river yet if it's too big too deep uh, too fast moving then we might have to climb back up and not go through the river but um, yeah we'll see doesn't look easy but it also doesn't look too bad so yeah we're we're gonna do that hopefully that's the right decision First river crossing, and we actually met another cyclist here. He's uh, almost done with bringing okay. all his stuff over, and uh, we're gonna check it out now as well. <laughs> Funny. on the other side of the river now uh, it was actually not as bad as I expected and it was 
kind of fun. <laughs> so that's good. Let's we just have to hope that tomorrow is gonna be not much worse. Yeah, but um, tonight we're gonna camp with uh, the other cyclist we met, uh, with Eric, and he also helped us a lot with uh, the bags and everything. So yeah. <laughs> What a road. As long as we can cross the river again, it's all good. comes the second big river crossing. Well this looks good. Huh? Looks good. Uh, yeah, down this little. That's it, we made it across. Now we just have to get down this little stone path to the main road and then it's another six, seven kilometers and then we hit hopefully the asphalt again. So that little detour saved us over a thousand meters of climbing, but of course was also quite the adventure. So, <laughs> oh man, but it was awesome. It was really awesome. the rest of the downhill part this morning down to 500 meters above sea level and now it's slowly going up again through another canyon so stunning scenery again and then we are now going up to Karas which is at about 2200 I think um, yeah if everything goes well we arrive there tomorrow
Piedra Blanca is Peru's most famous and prestigious mountain range. Stretching for over 200 kilometers in the heart of the country, it has over 700 recognized glaciers and several peaks above 6,000 meters. Most known is the highest peak and Peru's highest mountain, the Huascaran, at 6,768 meters. From east to west, Highway 107 runs straight through the Cordillera Blanca, climbing up a series of 28 switchbacks to reach one of the highest tunnels in the world, the tunnel Punta Olimpica, at over 4,700 meters above sea level. So we're on the ascent, we're at 4,300 meters now and not noticing anything yet from the altitude, hopefully it stays this way. Um, the gradient is also really good, it's, I don't know, 4 or 5% most of the time and of course asphalt, luckily, so it's definitely much easier than the last time we cycled up to 4,800 where it was, uh, yeah, definitely a lot tougher on gravel and steeper. And it is getting a bit chilly. <laughs> uh, as soon as you stop, you kind of notice it. Um, but yeah, we're so excited. So excited. <laughs> and the views are great. over 4,500 now and we are starting to feel it. It's like we're much uh, faster out of breath and the legs are getting tired and uh, the heart is beating faster. And harder. So. second to last switch back so just that way back once more one more corner and then we should be at the tunnel and it's just starting to hail now just slightly snow. or snow even I mean we're literally at the snow line <laughs> at uh, now 4660 meters and uh, yeah it's starting to snow at exactly the same time as yesterday it's like 12 noon exactly the same time <laughs> Only yesterday we managed to set our tent up already, super early, but uh, yeah. Oh. And there it is. The highest tunnel in the world, 4,736 meters. Wow, that's actually pretty long. It's Almost 1.4 kilometers long. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> 
All right, here we go through the highest tunnel in the world. And of course, it's pitch black. <laughs> no electricity up here. Oh, wow. That's cool and scary. I can't see shit. <laughs> Well, that was a bit scary, especially when a car came from behind and we weren't sure if it would see us. Nice. last night we both have stomach ache headache we feel really weak yeah. <sighs> and uh, no idea where this came from now but it's really annoying because we're in a pretty remote area mm -hmm. um, but yeah we're gonna cycle on a bit once we have the energy to get out of the tent and then hopefully there's a town it should be a small town with a small hotel mm -hmm. oh. Oh, I don't want to cycle today, <laughs> but we're in a forest, there's <laughs> in the middle of nothing. Nowhere. <sighs> so after now spending the better part of the last hour just taking turns going to the toilet because we just have really bad cramps and diarrhea. Yeah, we're gonna leave now. And this feels exactly like when we had parasites or food poisoning in Nicaragua. We're just so weak. It's completely, it's even hard just to stand upright because it, it just hurts in the whole abdominal area. And there's just no energy. So let's see. 16 kilometers to this town with the hotel. Oh. spent one night in the hostel now already and we're much stronger or we're feeling much stronger than yesterday already because yesterday we were just so weak and so yeah. done yeah. but still especially I have very bad diarrhea so not not good yet yeah. Yeah. so we've booked this hostel for two nights and then tomorrow we'll have to see how we feel. Oh. So, unfortunately, well, fortunately, Louisa is better today, but I'm, it's much worse. much worse. It's the whole day, I think I've been to the toilet like 20, 25 times. I've lost so much fluid, it's incredible, and I think tomorrow morning, if it's not better, we, we have to go to a doctor. Yeah, sure. And this is the sickest I've ever been, it's really incredible. This is really... never experienced anything like this. Oh, yeah. and everything is bloated and cramping, and it's just... Oh. Not great. No. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, we have to see how long we gotta stay here. I think we're gonna be here a week or something. I can't imagine. I'm so weak. 
I just can't imagine. No. Oh, fuck. So, I'm afraid we have some pretty bad news. We checked it again and the tunnel we cycled in the Cordillera Blanca is actually not the highest in the world, it's the second highest. There's one in China that's pretty new and that's 20 meters higher. <laughs> Shit. Um, but yeah, we're actually feeling a lot better. We've been here for like a week now, actually almost a whole week. And this guy is just selling something. And uh, yeah, we've had some time to plan now, a lot of time actually to plan our upcoming route or remaining route through Peru. And the plan now is we are gonna cycle maybe three, four more weeks through the Andes, through the mountains, including past the Cordillera Huaywash in a few days, which is a um, also very famous and very beautiful mountain range here. Um, a bit south of the Cordillera Blanca. Then um, we are going to cycle a part of the Peru Great Divide Trail, um, which is also pretty well known among cyclists. And then um, we, but only a part of the Peru Great Divide, and then we are going to cycle actually like 250 kilometers only downhill from almost 5,000 meters to sea level because we're going to the coast. We're going to do some maybe two weeks of only kilometers at the coast, kind of uh, getting some distance done before we then in the south of Peru head up towards um, uh, the Lago Titicaca, uh, Titicaca Lake, the highest lake in the world, um, and then cross to Peru. And to get up there from the coast, we're going to cycle along a nice trail again as well. Yeah, so that's the plan. But we are very happy we're gonna that we're feeling better now again and uh, ready to push some altitude again. <laughs> peaks and glaciers and so on already belong to the Cordillera Waiwash and it looks pretty stunning. <laughs> Been raining non-stop for 40 minutes now half an hour 40 minutes i don't know something like that and like pouring pouring rain. and now there's and ice hail. forming and hail yeah it's <laughs> so, so cold, cold.
So we're almost at the top now of the Cordillera Baywash uh, at almost 4,750 meters. And to be honest, it hasn't been worth it at all because the day started off with really beautiful scenery with the lagoons and so much you can kind of see in the background and then this mine started and there was now there's so much traffic literally every two minutes we have to stop and let some huge mining truck pass you have this construction noise rattling through the whole landscape maybe you can hear it and it's just and yeah just visually it's just destroying the landscape it's uh, it's really sad and this is a national park this is like meant to be if you're if you go hiking here one of the top 10 hikes in the world you know this is such a famous and beautiful national park and they're just destroying it it's no words for it <laughs> it's just sad So we're on our way up to the highest pass we've ever been, 4,990 or something like that meters. And it's quarter past 12, so just middle of the day and it's just starting to hail. And it's so annoying, like almost every day for the past weeks now, at some point between like 12 and three, it starts yeah, raining, hailing, whatever. And it's just, your cycling day is so short it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. We're at almost 4,900 now and it's the view is spectacular and we left so early this morning just to avoid some more storms that will probably come in the afternoon and it's so cold it was minus five this morning but it's just so crisp everything and it's it's awesome it's really awesome and just a little bit more a little bit more and then that's the pass up there we managed the highest pass we've ever cycled and to be honest it wasn't as hard as we expected and it just feels great yeah. to uh, that we accomplished that <laughs> and actually it wasn't too bad that we didn't cycle further yesterday because now today we had an amazing view and we didn't have to rush um, because we had to fear that it would start hailing again so yeah, yeah, that was great, and now we're gonna start the descent, which is, I guess, gonna be pretty cold. Yeah. <laughs> Rocking her to sleep 
morning. So this is the coldest night by far we've had in Peru now and actually one of the coldest nights we've had in general on this whole trip. It's minus 11 Celsius right now. It's freezing. No, I really have to get back into the tent, into the sleeping bag, but it's just such a strange atmosphere right now. The sky is crystal clear. <laughs> oh. And it's not just the the fly sheet that's frozen in the inside, but it's actually the inner tent that's also frozen up here and everything. It's so crazy. Yeah, first time we had that. Yeah. <laughs> The sun came and everything is starting to thaw now and because we have our great thermos <laughs> we are able to have a nice coffee now in the morning without boiling water first. It's so hot. It's not hot but it's pretty warm. That's good. Considering it's minus 11 or was minus 11 <laughs> I think it's alright. We have 50 meters or so left to climb on the last pass of this 400 kilometer segment of the Peru Great Divide Trail, which we've now cycled, and we are so done. We just had to eat something because we were just so dead. And it's 50 meters, but it's, oh. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> we are so, never before, I think, have we been mentally and physically so dead. Then after like, yeah, what, one and a half weeks now, of only camping, only at high altitudes, only climbing or descending every single day, often above four, four, six, four, seven. There, last bit. And although this definitely wasn't the highest pass, it was, I think, the second toughest on this whole trip now. Oh my god. Yeah, was ma ich mach's grad. Well, you're probably wondering what happened. Uh, well, a few kilometers before we finished the part of the Great Divide Trail we wanted to cycle, my front room broke. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of still lucky because we were only a few kilometers far away from a town. 
So we had to push there and then we had to take a bus to Lima, which is the city we would try to avoid the most. Um, but well, now we, yeah, it was the only possibility to get the bike fixed. And we did find a dealer that had a room with 36 spokes, which was very important to us. And we could my, replace my front rim and then decided to just um, yeah get uh, four new rims in total because all of them showed significant sign of wear because I mean we've been cycling 20,000 kilometers now and 16 months so yeah we thought better to just replace them all now yeah and now they're back with us and we gotta get the bikes ready to leave tomorrow again Lima is a huge city. With over 10 million people, it is not only the capital and the biggest in Peru, housing a third of the whole country's population, but also one of the biggest cities in the Americas. Passing right through Lima is the Pan American Highway, already existent since before the Inca Empire and running all the way along the over 2,400 kilometers of coastline in the west of the country. Known for its brutal wind, bad traffic and rough desert environment, the Peruvian coast on the Pacific Ocean is a challenge in itself. Other remnants of ancient cultures can also be seen at the Nazca Lines, approximately 400 kilometers south of Lima, and of course throughout the country at more famous ancient monuments. So we did it, we arrived in Arequipa after 11 days cycling on the coast. We managed to cycle 1000 kilometers and it wasn't as bad as we had feared. Um, it also wasn't as flat as we thought, <laughs> but yeah, um, it was quite all right to cycle along the coast. And yeah, now we're back at 2300 meters above sea level already and it's actually almost warmer here than it is uh, it was in Lima uh, so it's quite nice and uh, yeah we're gonna take a few days off here some rest for our legs and then we're gonna cycle the last stretch to um, the Lago de Titicaca and uh, yeah it's gonna be about two more weeks and then we will leave Peru then it's gonna have been three months which is quite a long time <laughs> Arequipa turned out to be one of the nicest cities we encountered in Peru, with a beautiful old town, market, landscape and climate. Situated in the desert, surrounded by volcanoes, it was warm throughout the day but cool at night and completely dry. We took our time exploring the city and even learned some more about the llama, vicuña and alpaca wool industry of Peru. Leaving Arequipa again after our rest days, we cycled our very own variation of the Camino del Puma trail up to Puno on the Titicaca Lake, which would prove to be quite the adventure. Extremely cold nights and several days on remote, high-altitude plateaus made the experience very memorable, 
but also challenging. And then, after three months, over 3,200 kilometers and 55,000 meters of positive elevation gain, we had made it to the Bolivian border on the Titicaca Lake. Peru is a land of extremes, from absolutely out of this world landscapes and dizzying altitudes to interesting people and diverse biomes. There are hardly enough superlatives to describe Peru. For us, it has been the country with the most adventure the most remote trails and some of our greatest achievements. But it has also been the country with the most disrespectful drivers, the most aggressive dogs, the worst roads and the biggest contrasts we've ever encountered. Contrasts not only in standard of living, but also in appearance versus reality and in mentality. Cycling Peru has been the experience of a lifetime, not only because it was incredibly challenging and truly unique, but because, for us, it was enough for one lifetime.